everyone, it's Aaron with Hill Varsity. I'm joined by Greg, recruiting extraordinaire, also of Hill Varsity, and we are back. <laughs> I, we are back for another episode of our recruiting question of the week. And this week, the question comes from Greg, but not this Greg, no. another Greg on Twitter. He said, does the staff dedicate as much time evaluating guys in the portal as they do high school players? Also, what is the over-under prediction on scholarship players that will transfer after this season? And can Nebraska oversign knowing this will happen? Now, Let's start with the second part of that question really okay. quick because I want to I want to dive into the transfer portal versus high school player evaluation uh-huh. more. But we talked about this a little bit this week about oversigning knowing that people can leave and that that bodes really well with the question we answered last week. Yes. So Give a quick recap of that, and then we'll direct you to that previous video as well. <laughs> no, essentially they cannot oversign um, <laughs> with the anticipation that yes. people will leave um, for a couple of reasons. One, they're bound still by kind of the 85-man scholarship limit, um, and so you still have to stay under that. Two, you don't know who's going to leave, if anyone. Like, attrition yeah. happens all the time, but at the same time, Nebraska is now at a place in kind of Scott Frost tenure where you're not necessarily trying to, like, hope that there's attrition and that you can replace them or coach over them because of the simple fact that he's recruited the vast majority of guys that are here, right? And so many of them, as we talk about a lot, are still very young and class standing. So you're just not in that situation right now. Yeah. And head to that video from last week, our previous recruiting question of the week, we did talk about the difference with um, that rule that the NCAA has put into place and how it will um, benefit teams going forward, but it does not currently affect teams. So yes, Lo- yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. Yes, but no is the way. All right, so let's get into the evaluation piece. You have yep. high school players versus the transfer portal. How are teams breaking up their time, knowing that the question is specifically Nebraska, but this is a question that a lot yeah. of teams have. Yeah, everyone is facing this right now, and I think that this is something that has been evolving within college football over the last couple of seasons, right? It hasn't been all that long that mm-hmm. the transfer portal has really been around. It has been like just a short amount of time where guys could transfer and not sit out. Out, right? right. Um, and so that's really kind of been a boon for kids and being able to move. But at the same time, coaches need to be able um, to figure out how to navigate that new world. So Nebraska has to spend time and dedicate time evaluating the transfer portal. But they also, and I think Barrett Root, I asked Barrett Root about this a couple of weeks ago, um, about how to really navigate that. And he said that now what you have to do is there have to be people within the recruiting department that are there, like part of their duties now is to Just about watch games of other teams right now where you would not have had to do that before because you never know who's going to hit the portal. So if you didn't watch someone from, I don't even want to say an actual school, a school X, you see no, because if I say a school, then it'll be Everyone's oh, they're looking. Yeah, school. right. Um, so if you say that what you're are you looking, saying, Greg? <laughs> right, that nothing at this moment. Um, so they do have to spend time watching games or game film from Saturdays to see who could potentially be out there if they're a fit. But then also, I do think that coaches and and recruiting staffers need to always be aware of who could be entering the portal, and there are a number of ways to do that. Um, one of them being is that having relationships from previous recruiting with like high school coaches, right? And so a lot of times the kids in college keep in contact with their high school coaches and they let them know, hey, I'm thinking about entering the portal. And then it becomes kind of a chain reaction of figuring it out. Yeah, and you know, you're gonna see, like Greg was saying, like people dedicating more and more time to the transfer portal. I'm I'm gonna switch to basketball for just a moment. But I mean, even Fred Hoiberg, when uh, Shannon Loom was a part of his staff, and Mm -hmm. I assume that they will refill that position as well. She was entirely dedicated to just the portal within the basketball world, which I understand understand is a little bit different than football but at the same time it's the same idea it's putting people in place where their entire job is to evaluate that space look at transfers look at that that just that market in general it's like a market it Uh, basically basically is kind of like a waiver wire it is that's essentially what it's waiver (laughs) wire is a great way of putting it and so you're going to have to have people who are dedicated to that focused to that it's going to change recruiting departments and so you will see more of that because staffs are not going to be able to we're already seeing their their stretched thin trying to get to games oh, yeah. in the fall and that's that's right now even just talking about high school and junior college games when you're starting to think about watching film of players who would potentially be in the portal that is an entirely new layer that they've never had to deal with before yeah and that, and that also makes me think of another just another way to a reason for recruiting departments to continue to expand remember mm-hmm. a couple like not even a couple of years ago maybe five to ten years ago every recruiting department expanded because graphics and edits became such a big deal I think that this is the kind of next thing with that you're just going to have to have 
have more bodies to be able to evaluate these things as it goes on. There's just so much to do now. It, it takes a village of people, that is for <laughs> yes. sure. Well, we appreciate the questions from Greg to Greg. <laughs> and we will be back next week, of course, as always, with another recruiting question of the week. But in the meantime, if you want more on this particular topic, head to HaleVarsity.com this evening, 6 p.m. Central, for the recruiting notebook. Greg dives into these topics a little bit further in that, but he also has tons of topics in the world of recruiting from Sunday <laughs> yes. through Thursday in the recruiting notebook. So just go ahead and bookmark that 6 p.m. Central. If you ask a question it was not answered, do not fret. Oftentimes those either end up in the mailbag, they end up in other notebooks. So just keep checking HaleVarsity.com and leave comments, questions here in the video uh, this week, and we will be back next week with more. Yes. Greg, any final thoughts? No, keep an eye out because there were a lot of good questions this week there that we'll were. definitely use in other places. You, you all... There were good questions. Good questions Appreciate this week. Appreciate you Next week is... I should say this week because <laughs> you all figured it out. We feel early. <laughs> um, but this week is Nebraska's bye week. So um, make sure you're asking questions because yeah. this is a good time to deep dive some of those questions. It definitely is. All right. Well, we will talk to you later. Thank you as always. We'll be back. Yes.